Sister, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Sister. Okay, we just go ahead and make a short prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you once more today, Lord, with our hearts full of gratitude for the opportunity to study your word, Lord, today. Today we are going to study on this passage, Lord, from John chapter 17, verses 6 to 19. We acknowledge that your word, Lord, is the lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And we humbly ask for your guidance and understanding as we delve, Lord, into this passage, Lord. We pray that you would open our minds and our hearts to receive the truths contained within these verses, Lord. Help us to grasp the depth of Jesus' prayer and the significance of his words, Lord. May your Holy Spirit empower us to discern the contrast between the world, Lord, and your word, Lord, and to apply these teachings to in our lives, Lord. As we go on this journey, Lord, of learning, we ask for your wisdom to comprehend the profound truths revealed in this passage, Lord. May our study deepen our faith, transform our lives, and draw us closer to you. May the Holy Spirit, Lord, illuminate our minds and hearts as we study together. Holy Spirit, take control of this session, take control of our hearts and all those listening here and let the words that come from my mouth be yours, Lord. Speak to me, Holy Spirit, none of me and all of you. Take control of the internet connections, all the devices and, and all the hearts of those present here. Let them they not only be hearers of the word, Lord, but also go out and do your word, Lord, and obey your word, Lord. Let there be no hindrance, Lord. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. So today's uh, topic is on uh, the passage of John chapter 17, uh, verses 6 to 19. So you can open your Bibles to John chapter 17, verses 16 to 19. There are not too many scriptures quoted today, but uh, we are going to learn about this word. And the topic is based on the difference between the word, W-O-R-D, and the world. And in this uh, passage, Jesus is praying for us. See, we, uh, we learned in Matthew chapter 6, uh, some time back on our topic on prayer that we Jesus was teaching us how to pray. But here Jesus is praying for us. So Jesus is praying to God and the Father on behalf of his disciples. So that's us. In this passage, he mentions both the world and the word. And so Jesus refers to the world. So he's talking about the system or the order of things that is opposed to God's way. Anything that is opposed to God's way. That's when he refers it to as the world. So it represents the sinful and the fallen state of humanity to characterize by, you know, re rebellion against God and the pursuit of selfish desires. So Jesus acknowledges that his disciples are in the world, but they are not of the world because they have been chosen and called out by God. If you read John chapter 17, Verse 6, so that's what it mentions there. We'll read the passage later. So on the other hand, when Jesus mentions the word, he is referring to the scriptures, the specifically the teachings and the commandments of God that are mentioned in the Bible. So Jesus emphasizes that he has given his disciples God's word, which has the power to sanctify and set them apart from the world. So John chapter 17 verses 14 to 17 will tell us this. So the word of God serves as a guide and a source of truth for believers. That's all of us. So helping us to navigate the challenges and the temptations of the world. So in summary to this passage, Jesus acknowledges the disciples' presence in the fallen world. But he also highlights the importance of the word of God in shaping their beliefs, actions, and separation from the world's sinful ways. So let us open our Bibles to John chapter six, 17, verses 6 to 19. And this is about how Jesus is praying for us. So we'll go ahead and read the passage. Sister Jaya, are you there? Would you be able to read John yes. chapter 17, yes. verses 6 to 19? Thank you. Yes. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, 
and they have received them and knowing truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I'm no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into this world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Amen. 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 Thank you, sister. So here, uh, it's a, it is a, there's another version. I'll just give you all the list. Uh, which version did you read, sister? Oh. Which version you read? The, you read the, the, the KJV version? The new revised standard version. New revised NRSV, okay. Yes, so then yes. in the KJV, yeah. when you mentioned... Yeah. Sister, you'll have to mute your mic, sister. Thank you. Sister, you'll have to mute your mic, sister. Thank you. So uh, here, you, uh, the word is... a. Uh, so it says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. So if any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. Huh? So 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, the main point of this passage is do not love the world. Sister, there's some disturbance. Can you mute your mic, sister? So it says, love not the world, neither the things of the world that are in the the world. So if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 says, do not love the world, love the Father. But that's much easier to read than it is to live. So we can see the world. We can't see the Father. So and given those two options, we, we tend to gravitate towards what we can see. So John recognizes the danger. So he commands us not to love the world which is correct. So are we in the world or are we out of it? It's easy to live following the standards and the perceptions of the world when they are all around us. So the things we see, we hear, we touch, and we know from society changes the way that we live. So our lives ever so subdued. So when you're talking, uh, when you are taking in today, the Bible provides a great alternate perspective to life. So it has all the answers to live our lives fully. So are we able to discern between what the world says and what the Bible says? So are we consciously and actively actively seeking the truths from the Bible? So if you have your Bibles in your hand, I want you to mark how many times the word world and word in this passage and how many times the word comes, the how many times comes the world and the word. So see, they are similar, both the world and the word are similar in spellings and you know just just an l separating them so many of us have given up on this idea of living you know so just mark in your passage later on you all can mark and see how many times this word world and the word word is mentioned so now we are talking on two sides one side is the world and one side is the word w o r d so i'm going to uh, tell you all the word versus the world so many of us have given up on this idea of living a victorious life and what we mean by uh, saying like living a victorious life means living a holy life we have given up on this idea we have this uh, you know this sin that is so strongly holding us in a grip that we have tried to get victory but we have failed so many a times we are fighting 
a battle, but we don't seem to get victorious. And so we give up this idea on holy living, at least subconsciously. We don't really accept that if we are not really living a victorious life or not even trying to, or we have probably given up, but at least subconsciously we have allowed ourselves to believe that it is impossible to live a holy life. So anybody here who degree, disagrees that we think, you know, that what we think, but as we read the scripture, the key to living a holy life is found in this passage where Jesus, the Lord, prays. So if you want to give this title, uh, a title to this passage, it could also be the Lord's Prayer. So hallelujah. So the Lord's Prayer is not what we generally see in the Matthew chapter 6, which we have done before the Our Father. You know, so remember, it's not, it's not the Lord's Prayer. The Lord didn't pray. In that passage, he taught us how to pray. But here in this passage, John chapter 17, verses 6 to 19, Jesus is praying. In John chapter 17, he's praying for many things, but the key is found in this word. So as I told you, notice how many times the word, world, and the word, word appears in, the, in this passage. It is almost the same spelling, but it's diametrically opposite to what the word is. So the world is opposite to what the word is. The word is the only, the word of God is the only hope that we have in this world. So did you hear me? The word is the only hope that we have in this world. So the word of God, I'll, I'll, I'll differentiate it by saying the word of God. So the word of God will keep you from the world. So if you are in the world, you will be struggling. If you are in the word, and the world, in both of them, you'll be struggling because the word and the world are totally opposite. So the key we have to find it in, is from this prayer. And as we read, and as you mark, I just wanted to take through this John chapter 17, verse, verses 1 to 5. Jesus prays for himself. So I want you to later go and read John chapter 17 again after we finish this topic. Read it again. And verses 1 to 5, Jesus prayed for himself. In verses 6 to 19, Jesus prays for his present disciples. And how many of us a year can say that we are disciples of Jesus Christ? Do you know what a disciple of Jesus Christ means? The one who follows him with everything. And then Jesus prays. So from verses 6 to 19, we are looking is that Jesus is praying for us. And in verses 20 to 26, Jesus prays for his future disciples and that's us. So this is the Lord's prayer and his prayer. Jesus touches on three great occurrences of our Christian life. So this is what our, our life will go to these three great occurrences of a Christian life. So during our Christian life, he talks about our past justification. Past means when we accepted Jesus Christ, we, are, we become positionally right with God. So when we say Jesus is our Lord, God and Master, we become positionally right with God. So we are justified. That means just as if I had not uh, seen, we are justified in the sight of God. So present, it talks about the present sanctification. So the meaning of sanctification I'm going to give you is that sanctification is a term used in the Bible to describe the process of being set apart, made holy, and transformed into the likeness of Christ. So it is a work of God's grace in, in the life of a believer. So we are all believers. So it's the, it's the work of God's grace in the life of a believer, starting at the moment of salvation. That is starting at the moment that you are saved and you have gone and confessed and you, know, you are saved and continuing through this journey of faith. So the concept of sanctification can be found in several passages in the Bible. So one notable verse is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, which says, For this is the will of God, that your sanctification, that, your, that you abstain from sexual immorality. So another verse is Romans 6, 22, which states, Now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. So sanctification involves both a positional and a progressive aspect. So positional believers are declared holy and set apart from God for God's purposes. So when they place their faith, faith in Jesus Christ, as it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11, progressively sanctification is a lifelong process of growing in holiness and becoming more like Christ to the power of the Holy Spirit. So two Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 says, 
all we and we all who have unveiled faces contemplate the lord's glory are being transformed into his image with the ever increasing glory which comes from the lord who is spirit so we are being transformed into the image of christ so that's the that's the will of god is that we be transformed into the image of his son so that he he can come and dwell in us the image of his son who is spirit it says so it is important to note that sanctification is not something that we can achieve on our own it is the work of god in us so as we cooperate with him and yield to his transforming power so he needs our cooperation first of all to yield to his transforming power so we are called to actively pursue holiness relying on the grace and strength of god while also rec recognizing that it's ultimately his work in us it's his work in us not our own work we cannot do anything on our own it is god's work in us so philippians chapter 2 verses 12 and 13 say therefore my dear friends as you have always obeyed not only in my presence but now much more in my absence continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling so we are all called to work out our salvation with fear and trembling each of us is responsible for our own salvation i can't be responsible for your salvation or you can't be responsible with for my salvation we can pray for each other but we cannot be responsible for each other's salvation so he's saying continue to work your salvation with fear and trembling for it is god who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his god's purpose so god is working along with you to fulfill that purpose that good purpose so sanctification means being conformed to the image of jesus christ and the meaning of the word sanctification being set apart so we are set apart to become more like him and then it also talks about his future glorification where we will all become like him like jesus so this passage touches on three and most of us on all these three points and most of us you know we have talked about the past how we get saved we talk about how we are getting saved and how god has done everything in our lives and we uh, we like to talk about the future of heaven where we will be walking on the streets of gold where the rapture will take place and we will all be in this new jerusalem we love to talk about the past salvation and we love to talk about the future glorification but when it comes to the present sanctification we start to squirm in our seats why why brothers and sisters that we all start to squirm and say why don't we like talking about the present sanctification that is being set apart for god's work because there are too many misconceptions we think wrongly about sanctification firstly uh, we mistakenly think sanctification means sinlessness no sin that is what we mean if i ask anybody what is sanctification what will you be your explanation sanctification means set aside for a holy purpose and that's why we need to develop the character of jesus in us so the moment we start talking about being changed to the image of jesus christ that means we are talking about you reducing you decreasing and christ increasing and nobody likes to be reduced none of us over here want to be reduced so when we talk about sanctification we are talking about us increasing and Christ, uh, us decreasing and Christ increasing, and nobody, none of us like to be reduced. If I talk about your blessing, if I prophesy over your prosperity, you will be happy. But when a preacher speaks about you must reduce, then we don't like to go to that church, or we don't like to listen to that preaching. So uh, the church, when I talk about church, is the body of believers. Like all of us are present here, it's the church, a body of believers. So, if a prophet or a priest comes and you know speaks the truth you are under judgment because of the way you are living you will not go to that priest or that prophet anymore so the, in the bible no prophet came and spoke anything good for you or for the nation of israel so every prophet was raised because they were not doing right you know god had to speak and god spoke warning to the nation of israel so why does he think a uh, view will be different so god's purpose for us is to be conformed to the image of jesus christ so god's plan for the church that is the body of believers that's you and i is to be gathered as one that is what jesus will do he will gather together as one and offer the church to the father but in this process we like to be blessed so much that we don't want to be in the in the process of reducing in the process of decreasing we don't like the process of christ increasing in us 
but sanctified does not mean being sinless we will never attain that place of being sinless because once you you are you are stained with sin you must be covered with the blood of jesus christ so the real sanctification is not being sinless but living a life where you will sin less you will sin less so i have lived a life you know full of sin once you know in my life i have lived a life full of sin it was all about me i wanted to be blessed i want to enjoy my life i want to travel i want to party i want to have fun and the moment i got saved i got saved because i believed in jesus christ and everything he has done and there is no sort of being saved it's like being pregnant you are either pregnant or you are not pregnant you can't say i'm sort of pregnant you know there is no state of sort of being pregnant it is like it is like you know being a dead either you are dead or you are not dead so half dead means you are still alive so if you are saved you are saved and when you are saved you have moved out of from that out of the, you know from that life to come here and now starts your life of living holy because i know i was sinning i was doing wrong then how can i still think of myself when i'm here it's not about me anymore it's about jesus it's about him and being conformed to him so it's a process justification happens here the moment i believe in jesus christ i am saved i am justified before christ and here starts the process of being sanctified so sanctified uh, the second misconception we have is some of you think it's the end of the good life we think yeah i i you know i i still drink and smoke and go for parties and all that is enjoyment and so sanctification for me means i give up on my enjoyment that is a wrong mis- misconception we have you think that you will never have fun anymore if you are holy no it's not that you're never going to have fun the things and you'll think oh the things of god are so dull so boring but if you read the word and you hear what the word says you will find that in the word there is joy you will find that there is peace you will find that there is love and i can tell you that there is true joy true peace and true love found in this side of living a holy life see i i can tell you my own testimony i was once a person who was full of fun and enjoying life rambling traveling this and but now that i've come to this life and come into the word and the word is changing me slowly i can see the work you know how i've been all the things have been cut out from my life so that's what the holy spirit does he cuts out things that are not of importance in your life and it's such a beautiful life you don't really miss it so you can enjoy the company of your close friends at home fellowshipping and it will be much more than drinking and smoking and when you go out and help somebody so even when you're going out and helping somebody on the street sharing the gospel with someone the joy that is there is uncomparable to the joy that we think we have when we are at a party you go for a dance or something it's not that we are not supposed to go for a party you go to a dance you go anywhere no you can still go out and do all that and still be holy so even i go out so the joy on the streets helping someone is there why because we are living on this side where there is true joy true peace and true love so why do we squirm when it comes to the side of living so many people don't want to be on the side of living of being holy so i have been i have been saved the last three years and i can tell you it's not easy to live a sanctified life but i tell you i have seen the change the way the holy spirit is disciplining me so it's a blast of an adventure it's an activity where you don't regret trying to live a holy life i wouldn't trade it for any worldly pleasures or fame if only i could have jesus so it's a truly satisfying drink of living waters if you only taste and see what god is so you know when you fall in love with jesus all you want to think about is jesus and it's such a beautiful life learning the scriptures learning the bible and you learn so much you know who jesus is and the extent of the love that he truly gives you it's not a life where there are no problems i'm not saying there are no problems there are problems there is stress but it simply means that it's worth living it's worth going through all that it does not mean that i don't have any burdens to carry it simply means that i have a stronger back to carry those burdens now why because it is the arms of the living god that is carrying is going to carry me and you now so when we start that process of being sanctified god is carrying you and me now so i am not doing it on my own i am doing here i am doing everything on my own i'm living you know in the world we are doing everything on our own we are living a beautiful life we are enjoying our life here and going to the same circumstances but in the word in living in in with uh, you know with the scriptures living in the word the circumstances don't change but the one with me stands strong so i have stress 
but it's worth going to because Jesus is with me. I have burdens, but I will go through with it because Jesus is carrying it with me. So in my years of being saved, it's better to live on this side of sanctified life or being sanctified. How? It's by living victorious. See, I'm living in a way that at times I don't live victorious. Sometimes we take the high road and we think we know the scriptures and I know this will happen. But sometimes I, we take the low road of thinking I can do something on my own and then try to do something on my own. And you love that. So I've been doing things on my own and I, and I need Christ with me in between these high and low roads. We have to start to learn that it is better to live on this side. We do have mistakes. We do, some, uh, we do see sometimes, do not listen to the word of God. Sometimes we don't listen to the word of God. There is a prompting. The Holy Spirit prompts us in our hearts and comes and tells us, you know, something that is that is wrong. But we, you know, we think that, yeah, even though we know it's wrong, we still try to attempt to do it. So sometimes we need to discern. We need to listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. But then the Bible says that when you see you have an advocate, that's the Holy Spirit who is with the father, who stands for you, even though you seem to bring back, you know, to this life where you're daily being sanctified. So we need to have a balance in our life that we are not sinless, but we are going to live lives where we will start to sin less. So we separate this word, we, have, we start to sin less. So pain is the primary motivator. And many of us learn from our past mistakes. Especially now that we are walking, that we are walking a sanctified life. And you, if you go back to your old life, there is pain. Sometimes you feel like, why it's like, it is like St. Peter crying out and saying, how could I do it? How could I reject my Savior? So there is pain, but pain is a motivator. So sometimes we get this pain, but that pain is a motivator that, that should make you want to come back to be to a sanctified life and to live a life that is holy. So if there is pain, but no coming back, then you become like Judas who's talking about uh, in this passage and pain should lead us in here to learn from our mistakes, but not, not to continue walking that narrow road, but continue walking that narrow road. We need to learn from our mistakes and continue walking that narrow road. So sanctified does not mean sinless or boring. So what does it mean? So if we read John chapter 17, uh, verses 17, sanctify them. In truth, your word is truth. So this is what Jesus is saying to God. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. And see what Jesus says. He says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is true. Justification happens at salvation. It is an instant thing. Sanctification is a lifelong process where you where you're born again and you've moved out from this side of the world, the world to this side. That is the word. So now you've come out from the world and you're moving to the word. When you uh, were in this in this place, that is the world, God did not sanctify you when you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. God did not, uh, you know, say, now you're holy. God does not do that. He takes you through a process in life. Straight away, you're not sanctified. It's a process in life. And what does it mean, sanctification? It is a process which involves spiritual discipline. So I don't know how many of us know about discipline. I never knew about discipline, uh, but that discipline is your part. Before I came to the world, I never knew about discipline. I always wanted to get up early. I always wanted to, you know, go to church every day, but I never had any discipline in my life. So I should just do things on the spur. I never knew anything. But now that I've come into the world and I know and Jesus is disciplining me. So I never knew that discipline is your part. And no matter what happens, you know, I choose to go. You uh, see, discipline means that you know, no matter what happens, you choose to go to church on Sunday. It's, you, it, it's your time of church, so it's a disciplined life. So even sitting down doing an assignment all night, one could easily say the next morning, "No, I don't want to go to church because I'm tired now. I've sat up all night to study, so I don't want to go to church." But because of a disciplined life, so no matter how tired you are in the night, you will say, "No, I will go to church." In the morning so it's like going to the gym and you know how many of us go to the gym here so there was a time and even i used to go to gym and no matter what happened i used to wake up and go because i wanted to lose weight i wanted my body to look good and at the same time a same it's the same thing with a sanctified life you must want christ so much you must want more of jesus christ so you will do anything and everything to have a disciplined spiritual life so it starts from where does it start sanctify them by the truth of your word is true. It starts by reading the word. And actually the word is, a, is, is what changed you. It starts by reading the word, having a disciplined time for reading the, the word. 
running to where the word is being shared. So in the beginning, when I just came to this life, uh, where I I just said yes to God and I said I'm going to I'm going to do everything. You know, now I've I've finished enjoying my life, so I'm going to now work for you, Jesus. I just made a casual statement like that, and that's when the Holy Spirit took that statement and that statement, and He started putting me into places like you know, because my discipleship course first. then getting into the word of god and slowly like it says no running for to wherever place where the word is being shared attending webinars throughout the pandemic attending webinars listening to the word of god making notes writing down notes so all this the holy spirit helps you he helps you to do you know and it's, it's your it's your eagerness to learn the word so he he with the if you if you want christ and if you want more of jesus christ you will do everything to have this discipline spiritual life and it starts and he says sanctify them by the truth of your word so it's true by reading the word having a disciplined time for reading the word running to where the word is being shared so i want to come so that i will hear the word so that i can live a sanctified life so when we learn and understand the word we are then becoming obedient to what and living a holy life doesn't mean like you know listening to good sermons for you it means good for what god has for you so that is why we need to be more encouraged by the word because it comes and cuts you and it makes you the word cuts you it's a double edged sword it come and cuts you and it makes you the word of god is called the sword of the spirit it is not just a feather that comes to tickle you and make you feel nice it comes to cut you to make you and to mold you so that discipline starts off in your path then when you read the word the word sets you apart from the world and now listen to this in the old testament in in the temple there used to be uh, some vessels those vessels were sanctified for the purposes of god and that is what the old testament say every vessel is being sanctified for the purpose of god that's uh, it says in like you know 2 timothy 2 uh, verse chapter 2 verses 20 to 20 being sanctified for the purpose of god so if you have some friends coming over to your house and you you want to give them a party and you're missing a bowl you know the church has a bowl so why not you say why not go to the church and carry that bowl home and have a party could you do that could we do that no as that vessel could not be used for anything other than the purpose of god that's why it was kept in that church it could not be used for anything other than the purpose of god so you are sanctified and you are being sanctified so how can you go back into the world and be used for the purpose of the world so you are being sanctified for the purpose of god you cannot go back into the world and you and you know you be used for the purpose of the world you are being sanctified for the purpose of god so you will be profaning god's salvation for you if you do that so you are profaning the cost that he paid the price that he paid for you might come you know so you might come to church and chill out and sing hallelujah hallelujah but if you don't live a consecrated life a sanctified life life is not all about you your life should be set apart for one purpose only which is to bring glory to the creator to bring glory to the redeemer glory to the only savior that is our purpose you cannot do anything for god to make yourself big you cannot have a big ministry you know a ministry is big enough because it's god's it is god's ministry you are simply ministering with god so if god was not there no matter how big you get you will still not be able to live a sanctified life and you wonder why so many of these big so called ministries fall because they are not living a sanctified life so we too like me i am also capable of the same thing i too can fall so don't look at me look at the word the word is truth and the word sanctifies you so in this passage that we read there are two entities that are contrary there are that are constantly contrasted every time the word and the world so as you know the world is our difficulty but the word the w r d is our deliverance the world is our difficulty but the word is our deliverance so we say an amen to that is it is the word and if you want to be sanctified you need to read the word and learn the word and what the word says about the world not only here you need to start obeying what the world says to live that sanctified life so how many years have been saved if all of us present here if we count how many years we have been saved, how many of you saved you can say jesus is increasing and i am decreasing i am becoming nothing but jesus is becoming everything and people can see they can see christ in me not me 
not me can i cannot say like brothers and sisters you know people say wow look at him she's a christian and she's enjoying she's living life to the fullest and she's just like us she's such a good person there's no difference between the world and you is that how your years of salvation look like this word here he's talking about the this word world is used 19 times in this passage so the lord uses it several different ways he talks about this world in the terms of creation he talks about the physical verse so also he says in john chapter chapter 15 verses 18 he says if the world hates you be aware that it hated me before it hated you so if you belong to the world the world would love you as it as its own because you do not belong to the world i have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hates you this is what he's saying in john chapter 15 verses 18 to uh, 18 to 19 18 and 19 so you can mark that in your bible so also uh, he talks about the physical you know he talks about the uh, the physical verse that he created in verse 5 he talks about the birds and the bees he also talks about the world as people or humanity like in john 3:16 he says god so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believed in him will be saved so here he's talking about people he's talking about humanity that he has created but most of the time when he's talking about he talks about the this world system and we have learned about the world system in us in our spiritual warfare talk the system of this world which is totally anti god everything you see happening in your governments the way people want to live their lives the way the laws are made everything is anti god and the world system so jesus says in john in 1 john 2:15 he's saying love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him so why does jesus say love not the world and the things of the world the now the world system and the things of the world are everything that are opposed to god everything that god made he has created the world but the world has perverted it so we all have perverted all that god has made so why do you think at everything that god has made the abilities that god has given each one of us how have you perverted it how have you misused it so god made uh, gave mankind sex so mankind has perverted it god gave us music we have ruined it god gave us the ability to drink and we have misused it yeah we have like i'll give you an example we can have iced tea but we want to have green tea this is an example so you know exactly what i'm talking about god gave us the ability to talk but we abuse it so god gave us the ability to have joy and humor but every humorous joke you hear is poetry in the society they are perverted jokes so god gave us the ability to make a living but we go we make that uh, that our god we make that living our god so we don't have time for god we have only time to go to work we make our jobs our god he gave us the ability to do our own thing uh, he gave us the ability to own something but we allow that thing to own us so god gave us the knowledge to create tools to make our lives better but we end up serving these tools so god gave us uh, you know the understand of our needs for clothing but today instead of being modest you want to have a big slit here or a low neckline or our pants go for a be- from a beautiful waist so god has given us here that we give it a name called fashion so we have perverted the things of god so no wonder god tells us love not the things of the world the world can refer from fashion to entertainment to business to technology everything that can be used for right that can be abused everything that is downright sinful and wicked we know but sanctification is a process of becoming less worldly you know this idea of becoming less worldly is very new to all of us to all of us present in the church here they want you know to they want to make it all about you but when god comes and says it is like this way we say no we don't want it this way we want the church to become like the world so the church is becoming hip we have rights and we have strobe lights and sound and music we have a stage and we have a dark room no different than going into a theater and the, and uh, doing the same thing we are becoming more like the world so rather than being sanctified from the world for the purpose of god so you know the problem is that the uh, is, is the world even knows that they try to make it a life living uh, you know worth it here but at some time this life starts to think and they need to go away that's where the church comes in being separated from this life that they think but you know stinks to come down to this place and give true joy true peace so sanctification is a process that becomes less worldly to make us more like christ so that's why i'm asking you and i need to ask myself to daily this question 
is the character of Jesus Christ developing in you and me? So do we have the character that obeys God like Jesus? Do we have the character that's, that prays like Jesus? Do you have the character that goes into church, the body of believers, like all of us gathered here to church? It could mean going for mass to a proper church or just gathering together as a body of believers so, and teaches the Bible like Jesus. So do you have that character that teaches the Bible like Jesus? So all this will tell you if you are living a sanctified life. So where do we start again? And we start with the word and the word will keep us away from the world. So I have a question for you. Do you have uh, devotions every day? Do you study the Bible every day? Do you, you send your children to Sunday school every Sunday? Do you come to church every Sunday, at least if not daily? So will you try and come daily to a fellowship that will, you know, will you attend the Bible study that this now this group, the Holy Spirit tongues group is having a Bible study. So make it a point to attend the Bible study that this group is having. So will you memorize some life changing scriptures that, so that scripture should come out from your mouth when things go difficult in your life. So does that happen? So that's what we need to start learning. So what is the ratio between watching television and reading the word? So how much time do you spend in both activities? You know, I was one person who used to love to watch TV, what love to watch movies. Now I've not even watched a movie for the last years. It's not of my own. It's all the Holy Spirit's doing. Every time I try to put on the TV, I just don't seem to be interested in the TV. So it's the work of the Holy Spirit. So this is what the Holy Spirit does. You know, he convicts you of all the wrongs that you're doing and he, he just starts changing you. So, you know, all this, we need to ask ourselves, how much time are we spending with the things of this world and how much are we, time are we spending with Jesus? So if you're honest, you've got to speak to yourself and answer this question. How much time do we give to the things of the world than to the word? Why do we put so much emphasis on, on, on being trendy than, than being modest? So why do we try to be like sexy before God in the way we dress and go to church? Why, we, why do we choose the world's music over, over that that is rooted in the word? We can also listen to praise and worship to gospel music. So why are we choosing the world's music? I'm not saying that you don't have to listen to music. Of course you can. But see the type of music that you're listening to. So why do we get ourselves into so much of stress when we, could, uh, when we are in debt? Sometimes when we are in debt, we are so worried, but we never think, even think about giving, uh, giving to God. So why do we spend more money on our dog, or on our pets, than on missions, than on giving to the poor? Why is it that when we have some kind of discussion of the word and the world, the world always wins? Why does the world always win? So we give more importance to our parties, to our games, to, you know, to our to our movies, to our work, than we give to the world. So why does the world always win because you put so much emphasis on being happy than on being holy so why why do we want to get out of here that is the world the word when all these questions are being asked why because all of us can say that we are worldly we well you see it's a worldly thing so that we think that we are in the world so we have to live as the world as is living with our five senses no we have we are set apart brothers and sisters so we say that we, you will see it's a worldly thing to do all these things that are worldly. So all of us will give this answer. It's a worldly thing to do all these worldly things to do it. But a sanctified thing, a godly thing to do is, is give it all up. So I'm not telling you to give it all up. But it's a process. It's the process only the Holy Spirit can take you through if you have, uh, you have given yourself up to doing God's work. So you should notice four phrases. Then we come to the end of this message. So four phrases. So also well, when God's saying not of this world, so it, he means it is easy to get caught up in the pressures put on us by our society. So it seems that we have to dress in a certain way, we, uh, we, but have certain possessions, live a certain kind of, you know, a house just to be considered average. People who resist these pressures are often labeled weird or different. So when we don't do all this, people are calling us, you know, weird, they're calling us different, but that doesn't, should not matter. So the, uh, that they often Feel so then when people start calling us, we often feel out of place, but you shouldn't feel out of place, brothers and sisters, because you are different. You know, so the community to which the gospel of John emerged, you know, did not feel at home in this world either. The, the message, you know, of the divine Jesus had to be, you know, respected by Jesus. So Gentiles and perhaps even the early Christians, no wonder the order that Jesus emphasized, because you do not belong to the world. Therefore, the world hates you in John chapter 15, verses 19. So in your, you need to know, you know, know where you are present today. Are you in the world or are you in the world? And the word is so important, you know, because the word is the, is the, is the thing that changes you. 
So today's topic is not much about scriptures. It's all about, you know, whether we want to live sanctified life. So we are pulled out of the system to the body. So we are taken from the earthly to the heavenly. So when God pulls us out from the world and he says we are chosen, we are set apart. So in Acts chapter 15, verses 14, he says, Simon has declared how God at first visited the Gentiles to uh, take them out of a people for his name. So uh, I said that uh, you should notice the four phrases when we come to the, you know, the four phrases in verse six, he says, I have revealed them to you, to those who you gave me out of the world. So we need to underline the word out of the world in this fashion. These are the saved ones. They are us. We have been called out of the world. So the word, the, the word church means ecclesia. So which means called out ones. So what does the word church mean in Greek? Ecclesia means called out ones so we have been called out but that doesn't mean we are leaving earth no we are not we are called out but we are not leaving earth no but spiritually speaking we are pulled out of this system of god's uh, of god's kingdom god's system into god's system so we are pulled out of the worldly system into god's system that's what he means that we are called out so the word church means ex ecclesia which means called out ones so we are taken from the earthlies to the heavenlies. That is what it means. We are still in the earth, but we are being pulled out from the system of the world to the God to God system. That is what it means that we are taken out. So Acts chapter 15 verses 14 says, Simon has declared how God, how God at the first at first visited the Gentiles to take them out, take them out, take out of them a people for his name. So he's taking out of them a people for his name. So God at first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. So we are taken out for his name. So the word church comes from the Greek word ecclesia. So ek means call and lisha out. So one day we will be called out of this physical world. But until then, we are still called to live in it as best as we can. So live this system with, with God's help. So that is what we are going to do while we are living on this earth. We are going to keep our focus on God and live this system with God's help. So Galatians chapter 1 verse 4 says, Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age according to the will of our, of our God and Father. So if you have been saved, then realize that you are no longer, you, that you no longer belong to this world. You belong to another world. So all of us present here belong to another world. If every one of you present here is saved, you belong to another world. Your citizenship is not of this world. Your citizenship is of heaven. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 says, But our citizenship is in heaven, and, and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. So you are an ambassador. An ambassador going to another country is not a is not a citizen of that country so when you're an ambassador you're going to another country you're not a citizen of that country but he's this ambassador stays in that country to show what the relationship of my country is friendly with yours so basically he's he's trying to show that my country is friendly with yours so god is still friendly with this world so we are representatives of that friendliness to this world so one day the ambassador will be called out from this country that is from the world to go and come back to this country that is here, it is the word, so that is heaven. So till then our job is to be friendly, to show God's love to this spread. So why are we, although we are called chosen from this world, we are still in this world. Why? To be friendly, to show God's love to this present world who so badly need it. Our world is perishing, brothers and sisters. As you can look around and see, our world is per perishing. And you and I are called out, you know, to be friendly, to show God's love in this present world. So you and I are ambassadors. So we should be separated. We should stand out as different. So your priorities will be different. The principles of this world will make you uncomfortable. That is why... You are here. The good news is that when God truly saves, he gives us a new heart. So when he actually saves you, truly saves you, he gives us a new heart. Your old heart is gone. Your old habits are all gone. You are a new creation. So with the desire to come out of this world, so that is how salvation works. He puts you to that fire and he keeps sanctification, like I said, is a lifelong process. So he gives you this new heart with the desire to come out of this world. So that is how salvation works. He gives us a new heart. A new heart does not want 
the things of this world. A new heart does not cry, you know, oh, I want a house, I want a car, I want blessings, I want this thing and I want that thing. No, a new heart cries, I want Jesus, I want more of him. I want to live like him. I want to live on this side of the earth that is in the word. So that's what happens when you have a new heart. You know, all you want is Jesus. You are not interested in the things of this world. Slowly and slowly, Jesus starts increasing and the world starts decreasing. You start decreasing. And so you say that I want to take as many people. And now your own, your main aim is that you want to take as many people as I can from this, from the world to the word. That should be each and every one of us present here. That should be our goal to take all the, our friends, our relatives, our family members from the world to the word. So where is the truth? Where there is truth, there is joy. So have you ever raised pigs? You know, pigs, uh, when you take them and you wash them nicely till they become pink, you can put a bow on their neck and you can roam around with them. The minute you set them free, the first thing they do is they go to the mud and they wallow themselves in there. So the Bible also says in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22, but it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit and a sow having washed to her wallowing in the mire. So he says like a pig goes and wallows, a dog also returns to his vomit. That's how they test food and how he doesn't want us to live on this side of the world. He does not want us to live on this side of the world. He wants us to live a sanctified life. That is what Jesus wants for us. He wants us to live a sanctified life. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He's making everything new, brothers and sisters. And you, once you're a new creation, he's changing you slowly, sanctifying you. He's putting you in that furnace. He's putting you in that fire. So all things of the world are not in, more of any interest to you anymore. All you want to do is God's work. So all we know this verse is it has been preached so frequently. We have been saying it. Anyone is in Christ. He's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You get rid of that old man. Everything has changed from this side. Uh, that is the world. So to this side, that is the world. So we are gone from the side of the world. We are gone into the side of the word. It's a new thing in our life. So in my belief, that's when a person is truly saved. He's truly seeking to be sanctified. So you don't have to bribe him. No one can bribe me now. You don't have to push me. You don't have to beg me to walk a holy life. If you are truly saved, you don't have to beg that person to come for Bible study. You don't have to call him to come regularly to church. You don't have to beg him, beg, you know, to do this. You see, when I, when, when I started uh, reading the word, I started automatically going to church every day. And now it's become like a routine in me. I just get up. It's automatic. No alarm, nothing. Get up. I sometimes come and listen to the word and at 8.30, I go for my 8.30 mass every day. But it's an automatic process because now I understand the word and I enjoy the mass so much more because I can understand what the priest is talking about. I, end up, I enjoy the Eucharist and that's when you start enjoying every part of the mass. When you start understanding the word, you truly understand the mass, you truly understand the gospels, you truly understand the reading. So it's not like you're just going and sitting there in church and, you know, staring blindly at the priest and you don't understand a word that he's saying. And you will not understand if you're just going to church on Sunday and if you're not reading the word. Okay, if you go to Sunday, that's well and good. And you maybe can't have time to go on other days. I'm not saying that you have to go daily. But you, we can start disciplining ourselves. You know, that's what the Holy Spirit does. He starts disciplining us. He brings us from the world to this side. That is the word. You know, so when a person is truly saved, he's truly seeking to be sanctified. So you don't have to bribe him. You don't have to push him. You don't have to beg him to walk a holy life. If you are truly saved, you don't have to beg him to come for Bible study. You don't have to call him to come regularly to church. You don't have to beg. You have to, you, you have, to have this, like, I'm thankful that I was raised in a Catholic church where we continue to preach. And if you're saved, you got to live like it. You have to talk like it. You have to seem like, like it's separated from the world by there. So there are a few ch churches that stand by this. God's grace, we are in that church. So we stand for holy living. So in verse 6, we, we saw out of, this, of the world. And verse 11, we saw in the world. So in, in this John chapter 17, verses 6 to 19, we saw in verse 6, out of the world. Then in verse 11, Jesus says, we are in the world. You know, so now which is correct? Are we in the world or are we out of the world? So both. Spiritually speaking, we are called out, but physically speaking, we are still in the world because we are living here. 
so we are we will always be in the world so it would be nice at the moment of salvation if god says i'm saved you know and simply takes me out of we would think like oh what if god just saves us and he simply takes us out of the world and to him isn't it i would love that but then who would be here to tell the world if god saves us and just takes us out of the world like a, like the rapture takes us straight away out of the then who are, who's going to be here to tell the world you know so i'm glad that when i heard this message from a pastor when i heard this pastor he was still here after 37 years of being saved just so that i could hear the gospel that he preached you know so when we are preaching this gospel and you are hearing it it's because that we have been saved we are preaching this gospel so that you can be saved and he said we are here in the world for this purpose to share the good news of the word so that is that is so true and how else would i be sharing it with you brothers and sisters so jesus says in verse 15 my prayer is not that you take them out of this world but that you will protect them from this world so jesus is praying for us that we will be in this world but we will be protected from the things of this world so that's how much he will is going to protect us we will live in this world life on this side of the world so in the world so we are out of the world we are in the world but we are not Uh, not of the world so basically we are we are still in the world because we are here but we are not of the world so in verse 14 he says i have given them your word he's telling god i have given them your word and the world has hated them so when we start getting to the word the, the world will start hating us the world hates us because we are in the world we are different so people can't bear to see this different self they are used to you being your old self so many people will not want to be with you now they'll try to stay away from you because all you talk about is jesus they don't want to be with you you know so the world has hated them for they are not of the world anymore and i am of the world so if you're not of the world you're not going to be popular you're not going to be famous so let me tell you if you're not of the world you will never be famous in the world they don't want that and in this side of uh, and in this side that is the world is jesus who is famous so the side that we are on it's jesus who is famous <coughs> it is jesus who is suffering glory all the time so we will suffer rejection when we are living in the in the world is that what your life is people will call you you know and they will mock you and they'll say oh here she comes praise the lord when they see you because you keep speaking the word and they will tease you but where do they come when they are facing trials in their life they call you to pray they call you to intercede for them so we are not uh, of the world then in verse 16 he says they are not of the world even as i am not of so he he's saying that as we are not of the world even as he is not so basically these people will mock you they'll make fun of you but when they are in a problem they'll come to you asking you for prayers asking you to intercede for them but then he says i'm sending them into the world if you notice the progression of all these four things he's progressing now he's saying i'm sending them into the world the progression of all these four we are called out of the world spiritually but we are still in the world physically so you have to get this brothers and sisters we are called out of the world spiritually but we are still in the world physically we are not of the world yet we are sent in the world so you know this formula will work uh, will not work unless we are willing to be different so it all takes our you know saying yes to god so if you are not willing to be changed <clears throat> you are not willing to be different so unless we are willing to be different so i don't know how you have received this word today what i've told you you know but it all takes it starts with you brothers and sisters god you will be saved you'll go for that confession you'll say i'm sorry god will save you and you know you'll get your salvation but then after that how are you progressing are you willing to be different from everyone else are you willing to be in the word you know are you willing to let god work with you are you willing to let the holy spirit work with you are you going to yield to the holy spirit and you know every morning say holy spirit i love you be my helper take control of my life take control of my day take control of my family take control of my cooking take control of whatever you want the holy spirit to take control and when you ask the holy spirit to take control so unless we are willing to be different so how you have received this word today but if you are not living this sanctified life today i want us to take this opportunity and come and you know rededicate your life once again so if you, if, if by this talk you have come to the conclusion that you are not living this holy life that nothing is changing in you even after listening to the word come and rededicate your life again come in front it doesn't matter who cries for you is it just a matter of your faith saying lord i'm serious about what i'm saying i'm so i'm stepping out of my faith coming in front of the altar kneel down in front of the altar and i'm going to cry out to god saying lord i want 
to live a sanctified life. So we all need to tell him, brothers and sisters, that we want to live this sanctified life. I want to be in the world, but not of the world. Go today, go and tell him that I want to be in the world, but not of the world. I want to go in the world to show your goodness. Make me a worthy ambassador. So we all need to be worthy ambassadors. Ask him to sanctify you with his word. So ask him to give you, uh, give you his love for your word. Build in me a character of Jesus every day. So every day you should ask uh, the Lord, give, build in me a character of Jesus every day. Help me to empty myself out of all the things of the world and fill myself up with you, Jesus. That should be a prayer daily. Help me to empty myself out of all the things in this world and fill me with you, Jesus, every day. I offer my body as a living sacrifice. Use me to do your will, Lord. If you talk to him this like this every day, he will use you and he will change you. And, you know, you'll see that change happening. So don't give up. If a person like me can change, if a person like me who was so naughty, who was always in the world, in the world, enjoying life, you know, I never had any problems, but I was into sin and into a lot of things that were not of God. So, you know, although I always love Jesus, I always have that 100% faith in Jesus, but the devil had used me. So the devil uses each one of us, but we have to come to that realization when to stop, when to say sorry. And that's when God starts using you. When you give that dedication, when you're obedient to his word, when you're spending time with his word, you know, so go and, you know, listen to teachings and make notes, you know, try to tell, should God needs to see that you are you know you want to learn his word and it's a, it's going to be a learning process till the till the day we die it's not going to say that i'm learning the word i know everything no i don't i don't know everything so i'm going to always be learning and while we are learning we are teaching it to others so that's the way it has to be you have to learn and teach it to others what has changed you what has changed you what teachings have changed you that's what you know you're going to teach to others and all the teachings that i've given are all things what have what have changed me like you know being this warrior for Christ, being this soldier for Christ, you know, having problems in your own house and how to not look at your family as a problem. It's the devil that we are fighting against. So let us always remember to put on that armor of God that we've learned about, you know, and start, you know, going out in oppression, in offense, going on this to this battle in offense, like, you know, to start fighting, getting victory over the devil in our lives. See, because the devil is putting us down and he's making us, you know, get into all the sickness, this pain, this worry, this fear. Anything that happens like this is all the devil catching your mind. When you're worried, you're fearful. There's nothing to fear because you have Jesus, you have Christ living on the inside of you. So the one that is in you is greater than the one who's in the world. This scripture, you should remind yourself all the time, you know, that the one that is in me is greater than that, the one that is in the world. So why do I need to be afraid of the devil? He's just a defeated enemy. Yes, we have to know about him. We have to know how he how he comes and how he at attacks us, but we don't have to be give him importance. He's not important. We just have to rebuke him. He's not important. Jesus is important. Our focus has to be on Jesus. Our focus has to be clinging to that wine, being that branch that's clinging on to Jesus, being yoked to Jesus. That is what we have to be. We don't have to worry about the devil. The devil will come. He'll give you sickness. He'll give you pain. He'll give you worry. He'll give you, you know, poverty. He'll give you all these things, but just rebuke him. You know that Jesus has done more and he's going to do more. He's taken us out from this world. So we have to be so, you know, uh, grateful that we are out of this world and we are in the word because the word is that thing that changes. So brothers and sisters, now we are having so many of these Bible studies on, on this group. So take the advantage of listening to these Bible studies, making notes, you know, and going back and listening to the teaching because the word is going to change all. So if you just come and listen and you go back and do nothing about it, nothing is going to help you. So you have to go and spend time. I know people are working, people are, you know, uh, doing, looking after their children and lots of things to look up, a lot of problems in the house. But in those problems, you put Jesus and he will guide you to those problems. It's not saying, not saying that I don't have problems. Of course I have, but I'm not really bothered about them because I know my Jesus is bigger than the problem. So I'm not really bothered about it. There are times when even I feel down when sickness comes and I say, oh, somebody pray for me. Yes. Uh, we all have intercessors to pray, but uh, we should be praying ourselves. We should be like talking to Jesus ourselves. Our intercessors are there to help us, but we also have to be praying for them every day so that they get the strength to pray for us. So that's why we are all called to, to pray for everybody. And we are all called to pray. Praying is going down on your knees, closing your eyes and asking, talking to God. You know, it's not just, you can't say that I pray in the toilet where I can pray anyway. No, it's a, it, prayer should be something that you go and, you know, sit in the quiet confines of your room and, cry out to God and that's when he will hear you and he'll be open to you. So give me your love for your word. Build in me a character of Jesus every day. Don't give up. Don't expect. So if you have fallen, get up. 
stay in the battle and you will win so god bless i'm going to make a small closing prayer for you all so in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen heavenly father we thank you for this time that we have spent studying and reflecting on your word especially the passage from john chapter 17 verses 6 to 19 we are grateful for all that we have learned and understood you have granted us through this teaching lord all the understanding that you have granted us through this teaching as we conclude this study as we ask that you help us to internalize the truths that we have learned and to apply them in our daily lives may the contrast between the world and the word be evident in our thoughts words and actions grant us the strength and the courage that from of uh, to be stand firm in our faith and to be a light in the, a world that often opposes your truth we pray that the lessons from this chapter john chapter 17 verse 16 to 19 would not simply remain head knowledge but they would transform us from the from inside out may we grow in our love for you and for others just as jesus prayed for his disciples lord thank you lord for your faithfulness thank you for all those present here on this bible study today on this on this class today in this holy spirit uh, thanks group lord bless all the bless their families bless sister jessica brother andre and all of them present each one of them present here and their families lord cover them with your precious blood keep them safe keep them protected bless them with uh, the mind of christ lord thank you for blessing them with the mind of christ give them wisdom understanding knowledge counsel might and fear of the lord lord and teach them your word most often holy uh, most important lord holy spirit stay with them be with them and guide them you know sanctify them for your work so that they may go out and do your your work you may we continue to seek to hunger for your truth and to live out the teachings we have encountered today in jesus mighty name i make this prayer amen amen and amen amen thank you sister thank you sister mitchi my god bless Sister, you can switch the recording off. Yes, sister. Yes, sister.